What the hell? Where are you? I'm standing right here, what do you mean? Wait, but we're at the complete same spot, what the fuck? Maybe the game is bugged. Fuck this game. No! You said we could meet our friends. Yeah. Then why the fuck can't I see my friend, you lying cunt? I will waste you just like you did with my money, bitch. Oh, shit. You could encounter other players. The likelihood of that is... No Man's Sky is an action-adventure survival game set in a universe with over 18 quintillion fully explorable planets. If that's too much for you to digest, just imagine Minecraft in space. A game which is somewhat enjoyable, but packaged with an insufferable amount of lies and deception. Sean Murray, the face of Hello Games, has said multiple times on interviews things in the game which never came to fruition. And when I mean features, I mean entire parts of the game that were never even included. Will you be able to play with your friends? Yeah. Can you grief other players? <laughs> A little bit. Before I get into the video, I have to throw a quick disclaimer up. If you have purchased No Man's Sky and you are genuinely enjoying the game, that's totally fine. Don't let me shit on your parade, but what I'll be addressing today is features in No Man's Sky that were never implemented. Lies told by Sean Murray. And honestly, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you enjoy No Man's Sky or not, because as customers, we were lied to by Sean Murray. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about is space. You know that thing that takes up about 99.9% .9 of the universe in No Man's Sky? We're going to be talking about that. So I'm going to start off simple and just move up from there. First lie that Sean Murray made was talking about the ability to land on asteroids in No Man's Sky. Can you land on a comet? Yeah, at the moment you can land on asteroids. You can't land on asteroids or comets in No Man's Sky. Even the larger, uncommon variants, there's no way to land on these whatsoever. You can shoot them for resources, but that's pretty much it. If you do something of significance, yeah. maybe you take out a space station or a fleet or, you know, something like that, right? Or just you know, desecrate a planet, take away all its resources, whatever, then we might think that's significant and we might share that. Mm -hmm. And then that would be the same for... Another lie weaved by Hello Games was massive fleets of ships within the game, which are never seen whatsoever, but they were continuously shown in the promotional material and IGN coverage. Welcome back to our month-long coverage of No Man's Sky here on IGN First. Today we're taking a quick tour of five completely random planets. Now it is true that there are some larger ships that you see warping in in No Man's Sky, but there's no more than three or maybe even four at a time. These giant fleets you see warping in in promotional trailers simply never happens. So again, this was a lie. Now this section of the video is focusing more on the NPCs in No Man's Sky, the three races in particular. Now my first point comes from an interview Sean Murray had, where he was extremely over-exaggerating the properties and value of the three races in No Man's Sky. And different races have different attributes, so some are scientific, some are kind of combative, right. and depending on how I'm playing I might want, want, might want to kind of make an allegiance with one or other. You know, um, so for instance, I might be a trader, and so I'll favor a trading race, get tech from them, that kind of thing. Could I you don't... just be a, a space? Now, to some of you, that explanation he made seemed pretty legit. There are three races in No Man's Sky, and each one of them does vary by quite a lot, but honestly, his entire explanation is overanalyzing way too much. NPCs in No Man's Sky are really nothing more than glorified vending machines, spurting out dialogue and the occasional item if you answer their question correctly. I've put many hours myself into No Man's Sky, I've maxed out my allegiance with all three of the races, and I don't feel in any way like I've been treated differently. There's a higher chance of me getting a better item or recharging my shield or my health, which is fucking pointless, 
but there's still no deep connection there. It's overall the interaction with NPCs is bare bones, and unless you want to try and get a free item, it's really not worth your time. Another claim that Sean Murray makes, which is a flat out lie, is the ability to see fleets of ships warring with each other and being able to choose sides and help which faction and they'll like you in return. It's full of choices. Like here, we're at the boundary between two warring factions. I could join in, I could take sides. Now firstly, this is completely fake. I have never seen anything like this in No Man's Sky. Sometimes you'll have three or four ships warp in and then a bunch of small pirate ships circle around them waiting for you to interact with them and fight them and then you'll gain the allegiance of whatever faction was under attack. But apart from that, it's pretty much it. There's no large scale battle just fighting four or five ships at a time. Now for the next minute or so, I'm going to be talking about the planet designs for No Man's Sky and how they're different from the promotional material to the full retail game. The planets in No Man's Sky have been really dumbed down from the beefy expectations in trailers and interviews that we saw. Like for example, in promotional material, there was many different kinds of sand planets you could visit which are non-existent in the final release. These look like planets with sweltering heat and incredibly aggressive forms of life. Like, for example, in one of the trailers, you saw this massive, huge sandworm moving through the desert. And in the full game, again, there's nothing like that whatsoever. Ezeloise is near the solar system's sun, so its surface is quite toasty. Some stubborn life forms have learned to survive here, but you won't unless you've crafted enough tech upgrades to be out in the sun or just find cool shelter. Another point as well is, in some of the early gameplay footage, you'd see planets with rings of asteroids around them. Again, that is not in the full release. You see asteroids in No Man's Sky, but they kind of just expand into existence. They're not already there, circling around the planet. So unfortunately, when I'm traversing through No Man's Sky in space, I don't feel like I'm going through a field of asteroids. I just feel like they're spawning in around me, ruining the immersion even more. Now I'm going to be talking about the starships in No Man's Sky and how they were dumbed down from the promotional material, which is like 90% of the stuff in this video. In early interviews, Sean hinted that the starships in No Man's Sky would have a huge amount of variety, you'd be able to name them, and some would be different, like for example, one type could be built for exploration and research, and the other could be built for intense combat in space. And now I can summon my ship. And this is a Korvax ship, so just like that guy I was talking to, uh, that will have been bought from one of his race, uh, and they're a scientific race. So this ship is kind of more scientific. Uh, yeah, I don't see any crazy cannons or, or lasers right, on exactly. that bad boy. Um, so this is more for somebody who would be an explorer, mm -hmm. right? Which is a cool thing for players. Each one of them is pilotable. Each one of them will handle slightly differently. When you have a ship, it feels a little bit like it's your own, you know, because it is pretty unique and you're not going to see 10 other people with the same ship. Well, uh, Sanity and My Vanity, once again, <laughs> is back. Uh, he wants to know if you can name your ship. Um, you, like, ships are actually a discovery, just like everything else. Um, and you can name your discovery. So you can name the ship type and then everyone who has that ship would have that name. Again, most of what Sean is saying is complete bullshit. There is no variation in the ships. I mean, there's a few different model types and a lot of different colors, but that's pretty much it. They don't all handle differently. And honestly, I think everyone is just looking for the ship with the most slots in them. And on top of that as well, there is no way to name your ship or ship type in No Man's Sky. It's randomly generated and you've just got to stick with it. So now I'm going to talk real quick about the resources and crafting in No Man's Sky. Originally, Sean Murray said in an interview with IGN that resources could be uploaded to the galactic map by players as resource caches so other people could discover them 
overall increasing the community of the game. So, for example, you could uh, discover a really rare mineral or isotope and then upload that for other people to discover themselves. If you're searching for an element, a great tool there is the galactic map. The first thing that's incredibly helpful if someone has been to that system before, in visiting it, they'll discover it, and then if they choose to, they will upload that information. And now anyone who goes to visit that system, anyone who goes to select it on the, the galactic map is going to know more about that system. So actually, other players playing the game in a very real way are like exploring the universe. And you have that little kick of like, oh wow, you know, thanks. Again, this is a total lie. There's no ability to upload any kind of discoveries you've made, apart from animals, plants, systems. There's no way to upload individual resources, minerals, or isotopes for other people to discover. Another thing Sean lies about is the complexity of the crafting system in No Man's Sky. Saying it's as deep as Minecraft, where you're told nothing from the get-go, and you have to craft and combine items in hope to create something. And even going as to say that it's as deep enough, you can literally combine atoms together to create molecules. What you actually gather, the resources from those, are like what I would refer to as kind of atomic elements, right? They're chemical elements. And those can be crafted. Those can be joined together to create something that is more complicated. Uh, what I would call like a product, effectively. So you can craft two elements to create a product. Really what you're doing is doing things like combining two atoms to create a molecule, right? And when we release the game, we're not telling people, here are all the formulas. We're just letting players loose and a little bit like Minecraft, people can, you know, figure out those rules themselves because I think that's quite fun. And, the game's all about exploration anyway. Of course, all of this is a massive over-exaggeration. Most of the crafting elements are given to you from the get-go, and it's pretty basic stuff like thrusters, health expansions, sprinting expansions, just stuff that helps you in-game, but it's nothing too deep. Most of it you've seen in other video games. The animals in No Man's Sky are fairly abundant, but in interviews and pre-release material, they were shown to have much more of an impact on the game and the planet themselves than in the final release. In early gameplay footage, you can see animals interacting with each other. Like, for example, this huge rhino scaring off this small group of animals and actually shaking up the landscape and the trees around it as it moves. You will never see anything like this in the full retail of No Man's Sky. Animals usually wander around aimlessly unless they're aggressive and attack you, or you feed them some kind of isotope to make them friendly towards you. Sean has also said in an interview that animals will attack and eat each other, like there's some sort of food chain. Do the animals eat each other? Yeah, they do. But unfortunately, through my many hours in No Man's Sky, I've never seen anything like this occur. Sentinels are the main antagonistic force in No Man's Sky. You'll encounter them on pretty much every single planet with varying levels of force. In promotional footage for the game, you can see the player being attacked by 9 or 10 Sentinels all at once, which never happens in the game. You're attacked by about 4 or maybe even 5 at best. Yeah. There you go. Oh, he no he no looked no to no the no left. There you go. Over that hill. And there's one coming for you. So they're much bigger and enemies begin really? to spawn as you. Another thing that was shown in pre-release footage but never made it in the full game is idle striders. You've got these huge strider sentinels that you'd see on more aggressive planets or if you've got a super high wanted level. But in this gameplay footage, you can see one casually walking around even though the player doesn't have a wanted level. But you never see this in the game. Sentinels, striders only appear if you have an incredibly high wanted level. They don't spawn in otherwise. Now at this point, I just sound like I'm nitpicking, but honestly, it sounds a lot better and it looks a lot nicer to see idle striders walking around. It makes the atmosphere feel a lot more alive instead of enemies just spawning in if you shoot a bunch of things. <laughs> Now, last but definitely not least, the multiplayer in No Man's Sky. This was probably one of the most hyped features in the game, the fact that you could explore this massive galaxy, all these planets, and you might even be able 
to run into a friend. Of course, all these claims never came to fruition, even though Sean Murray has said multiple times across multiple interviews that you will be able to meet up with other people. It's a low chance, but you will. Do we ever get to see ourselves? Uh, no, you don't see yourself, so the only way for you to know what you look like is for somebody else to, you know, to see you. Can you run into other people, other players on the game? Yes, but the chances of that are incredibly rare, just because of the size of what we're building. Wow. You could encounter other players. The reality is the likelihood of that is tiny, basically. Sean has lied. He has gone onto multiple shows, presented himself saying there will be a multiplayer element, but he's lied. You cannot, at the moment, meet up with other players. It's absolutely impossible. Yes, you can name planets, systems, upload it for other people to see, but that's the multiplayer. That's not really multiplayer in my opinion. That's like a single player game having a leaderboard function for whoever completed the map in the fastest time. That's not multiplayer interaction. That's reading a scoreboard. Honestly, it disgusts me that Sean and Hello Games have lied about the multiplayer and all these other features. And I wouldn't really be surprised if someone filed a lawsuit and tried to sue them because they have misadvertised a lot of products that never made it into the final release. And the fact on top of this, Sean has been incredibly elusive and not giving out details and being really cryptic in his messaging while flat out avoiding other topics. Like for example, he's never addressed the fact that players have never been able to meet each other in No Man's Sky. In conclusion, No Man's Sky has a lot of features in it that were never implemented, dumbed down, or just honestly lied about. Hello Games aren't the first company to do this. Many game developers have lied about features in the past, but with Sean Murray and Hello Games as a whole, they've definitely taken it to a next level. Lying about the whole multiplayer aspect as a whole, being incredibly cryptic and unhelpful to purposely manipulate and trick people up to the last minute, about buying their $60 game. Now, a lot of you probably think I absolutely despise No Man's Sky, and honestly, I enjoy playing it. It can be quite tedious and boring at times, but I enjoy the game, but that doesn't exclude the fact that they have lied about a lot of aspects in this game, so I was forced to make a video talking about it. I just want to give a massive shout out to the Reddit user Meet Wayne Kerr. He made this amazing Reddit post detailing everything that Sean Murray and Hello Games have lied or fabricated about, Unfortunately, his Reddit account has been deleted. I'm really not sure why, but thanks a lot, dude, if you're watching this video. And also, I want to give a shout out to Solid Shibe, who made that GTA 5 skit in the intro. Does really good videos. Check him out as well. Again, everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this lengthy video explaining everything wrong with No Man's Sky. If you enjoy the game or you don't, it really doesn't matter. Today, I was talking about points that were flat out lies by Sean Murray and Hello Games. Honestly, it's really depressing that No Man's Sky and Sean Murray are making so much money from essentially selling people half-baked truths and a fair amount of lies. No Man's Sky is now the second best-selling game published by Sony, only beaten by Uncharted 4, so they are definitely making a lot of bank from this. But again, like I said, if you enjoyed the game, congratulations on your purchase, but No Man's Sky did lie. They've lied, and they've made a fuck ton of money in doing so. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. <laughs>